Because this is a very beginner guide, I thought we could also do Dofus Touch classes. And I'll give you a very brief and concise walk over um, what classes there are, because they're completely different from what we have on the normal Dofus. And just sort of give you a general idea so you can have an initial pick of a class that you'd like to start with when you get going. So, the first class is the Enutroph. It stands for Fortune. This is a class that is versatile. It is not based around big damage. It's based around support for its allies, so it thrives in groups. It is the class, one of two top classes, that can reduce the enemy's ability to move, to use their attacks, and keep them at bay. It can also protect and shield its allies using these living bags that it can summon, that will take damage on your behalf. It can summon chests that can deal damage on your behalf. So this is a sort of um, team player in essence, that can hinder the progress of the opponents while making sure its allies can do more by buffing them. For example here, it can give its allies movement points so they can walk further. It can give them uh, power so they can deal more damage. So that's the Enutroph. Mind you, with Dofus Touch, they don't have as many classes as we have in Dofus 2.0. They have 15 classes only, while we have 19, so there are 4 missing classes. So the Enutroph we've covered right now. The Ek Eflip, the way it's designed here is um, they've reverted back to the essence of the luck character, which will be based around things, effects that might happen, that might not happen. If you get hit and the enemy crits on you, you gain some faculties like movement points or action points. If the enemy attacks you and nothing happens, then you gain other or different kind of uh, effects. Um, your attacks as well can have secondary effects. It's not just the line of damage that you deal. You can have crits, you can apply erosion, and the essence of this class is based around luck. Some things may happen, some things may not happen. You're never 100% sure of what might happen when you cast a spell. The IOP, the usual, the most meta character across all MMOs and MMORPGs. This is the Paladin the damage dealer, the small-brained, big-muscled kind of character that likes to rush an attack and deal big damage. It has the ability to jump inside the map so it can move further than its movement points allow. It can increase its ability to deal damage by having more action points so it can cast more spells. It has uh, area of effect damages, that means it can target not just one, but a bunch of enemies if there is more than one. It can heal itself, it can increase the ability to deal more damage, and it has this awesome spell that can deal big, big damage as you load it and as you go further. The next one is the Sadi. This is a peculiar class. It is a class that likes to take its time and build up game over time. It does not deal big damage from turn one. It can summon little dolls and trees to help it reach certain objectives. It is very good with reducing the enemy's ability to move. It doesn't deal big lines of damage, but it can certainly build up to it over time. It's good in a team, it's good in solo, and we will see later where I think it plays in the PVM tier list. The Sakri is just like the IOP. It is a class that likes to rush in the middle of the fight and deal big damage and also in areas of effect, as in it can target more than one character. Uh, this class has the ability to tank more than others, as in it has a natural ability to reduce the damage that it takes. It can also protect its allies by taking damage on their behalf, which is really cool. We have the Fekka, one of the most classic Dofus characters there exists. This is the protector this is the absolute best protector. It plays around shields, it can protect its allies, it can protect itself, and it can cast these things that are called glyphs. So it's like laying down a carpet on the map. If an enemy stands on it, it can get damaged with it. It has fantastic ability to shield its allies and itself, and also teleport and move about in the map, which is great if you like to set up your game, move away, protect your allies, it's quite versatile. So good movement, 
shields and it can lay these traps that remain visible on the map and enemies on them suffer some effects like this one for example the burning glyph can deal um, it sets a glyph on the map that can remove movement points and deal damage on top fantastic class overall and we will see in the pvm that is highly prized and most people tend to favor this as part of the most picked classes because of its efficiency in finishing fights really quickly yes skirt you're absolutely right the aoe on this class is beautiful and that's why we will see in the tier list later on that it will consistently feature at the top of my picks because of its ability to churn through fights quickly by hitting multiple targets all at once. Cool. The Osa Modus is a peculiar class. I don't know how to describe it aside from this is the Beast Tamer. It's a class that can bring others. It can bring creatures into the fight that did not start there. That's how it deals damage. Not directly. I think I believe from my research it only has one spell that can hit multiple targets. Everything else is about bringing new creatures like a boar, a tofu, a gobble. It can bring about more allies that will deal damage on its behalf and take damage on its behalf. It is the summoner class by excellence. The Shram. This is one of the most interesting classes. This ability, this class has the ability to go invisible. It's the silent killer. It can disappear in the map and nobody can see it. It can lay traps that people can walk on and then suffer damage and have effects. It has good mobility as in it can push things and it can run far away uh, using the traps of course. Is it, is it better now? Great, sorry about that. I'll, I'll restart from scratch about the Shram. The Shram has a good ability to disappear in the map. It goes invisible. It can lay traps. These are the two main characteristics of it. So using the traps, it can deal damage. It can position enemies and allies. And it has the ability to go invisible for a number of turns where the enemies cannot see it. So it can move freely in the map and lay traps where it wants. And it enjoys a certain level of impunity during the turns where it is invisible. Unless it is found, of course. The Kraw, one of my darling classes. This is the other classic um, um, represented class in all MMOs and MMORPGs. This is the... Uh, archer class that can hit from a distance and deal big damage from the first turn and as we'll see in the pvm tier list later on this class is also big time favored in modes that favor speed so if you're farming trying to reach level 200 as far as possible this is one of the classes aside from the feka that are picked highly because of its ability not only to deal big damage from turn one but also hit multiple targets um consistently as it goes through and this spell in particular called explosive arrow that can hit in a big area of effect any enemy that is within there will get damage so you can churn through fights rather quickly it's simple it doesn't have any added mechanics aside from the fact that it's an archer that can hit from long distances and buff its allies as well with the range so everybody else benefits from its presence by being able to take a distance and hit from afar without taking any direct risks. The Panda, one of the most uh, controversial classes. This is the only class in the game that has the ability to um, lift things and place them where it wants. And this gives it the ability in PVM, as far as we will see, in order to rush the new server. It gives it the ability not only to create zones to damage itself and finish fights faster, but other allies can benefit from that. If you have enemies scattered around the map, a panda can be useful in regrouping them so you can deal more damage and finish them faster. So everybody benefits from having a panda around. The Masquerader. This is a subclass that comes from the Sadida realm. If you remember this voodoo doll summoning class, 
this is also in the story of Tophus belongs to that family. It's a um, forest dweller that has one ability. It's shielding. Using masks it can change states. It can shield its ally as in give them a layer of um, something that looks like health points that you have to hit through first before you get to the health points. So it has the ability to protect everyone around it, to protect itself and it is a fantastic damage dealer but not from a distance. It likes to get close in order to get its damage done. And the ability to shield, damage or protect itself can be dictated by which mask it is wearing and that is why it's called a masquerader and you can see a, plent a certain number of masks on the image there. The next one, I think this is either the most underrated or the most overrated class because uh, in pretty much Dofus and Dofus Touch it's not played too much. It is a high skill uh, kind of class that in my view, in my personal opinion, it's a PvP kind of class or it's a pleasure kind of class. When you are looking for a challenge, you want to try something completely different, Zelor is the class. But sadly, the mechanic for dealing damage relies on the ability to move enemies. And a lot of times in PvM, some enemies do not like to be moved or can stop you from uh, moving them. And that sort of minimizes the power of the class and therefore turns it into something you don't want to have in your team in PvM unless the conditions are good. But the principle of the Zelor, if you flip it, it becomes Rolex. It's the master of time. This guy places um, uh, some summons that can uh, deal damage on its behalf, that can change the nature of its damage in Dofus Touch. But all of its gameplay is designed around time and also removing the enemy's AP, but we will have to see that and how it works on Dofus Touch. You can slow down the enemy's ability to deal damage and play full turns. Hello, Khav Martin, and hello, Dersia. Welcome. We are doing a Dofus Touch uh, quick refresher before we start a new adventure for the next three weeks. Uh, well, starting from the 3rd of April when they release the new servers, I'll be playing alongside the community Dofus Touch in order to reach certain milestones so they can unlock some brilliant rewards for those of them that will play. And if all goes well, I think Dofus Touch might replace Cl uh, Clash Royale in my, uh, in my phone. <laughs> if all goes well. I think it has the potential from everything I've seen so far. The Aneripsa, if we, if we flip the name, you get Aspirin. This is the healer by excellence. In Dofus Touch, it conserves this aspect if you play the Intel. All the spells that are in red are usually spells that can affect some heals, as in bring the allies' health points back up. It tops them up. So this is a good class to have in a group. So it protects everyone, it keeps everyone going. In other elements, as we will discuss sometime in the future, if you use different elements than Intel, then all of a sudden you minimize the role of the healer and then you maximize the role of a damage dealer or a positioner. So it is versatile. It has the ability to increase its allies ability to deal damage and use actions by giving them AP or action point. And it can heal and keep everyone topped up and alive as much as it can. Fantastic class to play in a group. And also solo as we will see. The Rogue. This is the Bandit. This class, as you can see from the image, plays around bombs. So what does it do exactly? It can deal direct damage, but its ability, the special thing that it has that no other class has, is the ability to summon bombs that can grow in size and deal more damage. And if you place them in line, you create an area where if anyone stands, they get damaged badly. And it has the, also the ability to explode these bombs on its enemies to deal incredible lines of damage. If you're looking for big numbers or killing something difficult in one hit, this is one of those classes that have the ability to do it. But that comes with a little ick. And the little thing that we need to know about is in order to deal these big damages and uh, one-shot big bosses, you have to place your game 
and sort of build up to that big damage. You can't do it from turn one. So it comes with risks. They could kill your bombs. You don't have the right placement, which means sometimes you won't have perfect turns if things aren't perfectly aligned. But if everything works well and you do things correctly, then you are in a good position to be able to see massive lines of damage like no other class is capable of. And the last class is the Fogonaut. These are uh, creatures that live under the sea and their specialty is summoning turrets. They summon mechanical devices that can heal, that can give shields, that can deal damage, that can increase their ability to deal damage. And, sorry, conversely, they can use these mechanical devices that they summon in order to move about in the map. They can pull themselves to it, they can push themselves away from it. And these turrets also can interact with enemies by blocking them, by dealing damage, by taking damage on their behalf. So it is a summoner class, but of a different kind. It doesn't bring about living beings like the Osamodas, but it does summon things that can help it um, uh, deal more damage in the fight and shield, protect and increase its mobility. Cool, so now we've covered pretty much all of the classes uh, with a vague and general cursory movement. We know what classes are out there if you were wondering. And hopefully now when you see the picture, you know exactly what the class is about. If you see the Shram, you know, if I click the Shram, you know that you can lay traps and go invisible. If I click the Echo Flip, you know that it's based around luck. What happens depends on luck. If I click the Crop, you know it's an archer, you're going back from a distance and dealing big damage. If I select the rogue, as you know, one of the biggest damage dealers, but it's all, all of its gameplay is centered around bringing about bombs in the map that can increase in damage over time and that they can explode, move to create glyphs to deal big damage. Right, so I think we've got all of that covered in about half of the time I've decided to allot for this first introduction.